What's up guys, it's Dragon. We have a unique opportunity to review something for you that's actually pretty special. And no, it's not Baby J, but she is feeling better and appreciates your well wishes. It's this. It's actually, it's roughly the size of, of Jinx. It's this tiny fishing compartment from Singapore. But is it? So inside that package was this. This is the Saab M20. Now, originally Saab was a company out in Singapore. I think it was just one guy. I'm pretty sure his name is Conrad. Thanks, Conrad. Who was making Caliburns. He was making Caliburns for the Singaporean market using 3D printing, and I'm assuming metric hardware. Now that was pretty cool because if you know anything about Singaporean Nerf, and I've had the pleasure of nerfing with them myself, springers are king in Singapore. And you either have a decked out long shot that you make yourself, or you have something from Explorer, my uncle Hing, which is like tippy top top shelf, uh, CNC, acetyl, and et cetera. And you, there really isn't a middle ground. So having somebody domestically making Caliburns kind of filled that gap and that was pretty cool, but not content to just be a Caliburn derivative. It looks like Conrad has designed and launched his own. This is either injection molded or pore molded um, Delrin. So Delrin is a thermoplastic. And because of that, this thing is super solid. When I say super solid, I mean like heavy. Like I think that a Nexus Pro, which is similar in size, even with all of my nonsense on it, weighs under two pounds. It definitely doesn't weigh more than two pounds. There's no way. This thing clocks in at five pounds for just the base blaster alone. And while that's definitely somewhat heavy in use, it gives you stable shots and also happens to be built like a brick. Seriously, the thing is crazy solid. Like. And the overall durability of the construction is not limited to the Delrin body. The Delrin body on mine is storm gray. I think it comes in three colors, but none of them are black. I think there's a tan and uh, something else. But the overall construction uses an entire thing of aluminum channel up pop, which the actual rail is sunk into. It has pseudo M-lock windows on the side, which I guarantee you are not licensed, but shh. Then it's got a full runner down here with a custom CNC kind of grip that you put your uh, pick tinny on, as well as a connection point where it would appear that it's AR-15 hardware, but it's not. And that's just another interesting thing that we'll talk about in a second. The blaster comes standard and that's with nothing on it, no grip, no foregrip, no nonsense. And also you don't get the special barrel for 850 Singaporean dollars, which translates to a little under 700 USD realistically by the time you've paid duties on it or what have you. And they are offering a special right now for my audience. You can get free shipping from Singapore to the United States. But once you've added a barrel, particularly if you want the Saber barrel, the, the integrated scar barrel, you're going to be just over 700 United States dollars. That makes this easily one of the most expensive non-explorer blasters period out there right now that isn't like a one of a kind custom from an artist in our space. This thing is serious. So what features do you get for that amount of money? other than just having something really heavy and virtually bulletproof. Well, if you look in here, you can see that there's a stabilizing bar down here with different indexing. That's not the point. The actual bars that prime the blaster in what's a theoretically patent pending plunger system design where the entire breech sinks back into the plunger and then back out in almost like a lipless breech sort of style is all controlled by these ball bearing oiled rods on the inside, which does mean that even under very heavy spring loads, this is a very smooth, very consistent prime. Now, if I pull this out, you can see inside there that it is in fact lipless. There's nothing visible here that's pushing this back and forth. Then you get a smooth chambering into the barrel every time, because again, like if you listen, Ball bearings are cool. In addition to the ball bearing priming rods, you also get a fully machined magazine release, theoretically compatibility with talons and katanas, although why would you use anything but talons these days? You get compatibility with exclusively an airsoft AEG style of grip. So I've chosen one that looks very much like mil-spec AR-15 hardware, but in the States, this is much, much harder to get your hands on than it is in Singapore, apparently, where they have no access to AR-15 hardware. That's just one gripe for me internationally as I had to wait a while to get my hands on something that would work, whereas I have a bunch of AR-15 groups running around and they cost me no money. That's my only complaint about an otherwise very beautifully designed kind of metric hardware set is that I don't like using airsoft grips. They're more expensive and lower quality. But let's move on to the actual hardware itself. The trigger is very reminiscent of a tooth and nail trigger as is the sear back here. And again, all of those parts are also CNC'd machined. For some reason, uh, the magazine release and the sear on mine are raw aluminum, whereas this one appears to be like PVD coated for some reason. And then you've got PVD coating on these 
back here in the stock. So you have a fully kind of rod stabilized stock. It does only have two settings. It has all the way out like this, and it's very, very sturdy, which it has to be for some of these spring loads, or it collapses like this. Now, I will admit, that's a little stiff. In addition, the stock is one just interesting quality point because everything to these machines tolerances should be really, really smooth. But if you look here, this doesn't do anything and rattles around constantly and has a lot of play. It's only when fully engaged and primed back like this that you can actually extend your stock, then it releases and comes out all the way. Another fun note is because of how the magazine release is designed, there's kind of like a roll bar in here. It means that you have to fight to get your magazine in at first. Now, once you're in, you're in and that's fine. Gravity drops are smooth, very, very comfortable, but you just need to be cognizant of that because the play here to here is definitely something that you're gonna have to get used to and overcome if you've only ever played with Nerf blasters. That said, there is slight beveling in here and the Delrin is oh so slippery and fine, which means that even at an angle, your magazine's gonna find its way home. Whoa. Heavy blaster is heavy, guys. Now each blaster has one more hidden feature. Each blaster has a lasered on QR code. I don't know where it goes, don't scan it, as well as a serial number. It would appear that I have number 44. Now the fact that these have been out in Singapore for a few months now and have made their way over to Taiwan and mainland China means that you can tell from that serial number that they're a pretty small batch operation at this point. 44 is a pretty cool number though, I'm super happy with it. I think that I have the first one in the United States and I'm very excited and pleased to get to bring you guys an honest review of it and tell you about the shipping incentives to get these over here. So that's a lot of me talking about it. I chose this over at Evike. This was a $30 grip. It's kind of got like a Cryptek thing going on, but it's clearly a pretty bad hydro dip. This is actually a grip that's currently available on foamproshop.com. This is everything you love about our regular hex grip turned into a pic tinny foregrip. This one's actually printed in Onyx over on a MarkForge printer. We're gonna print ours in PLA. No muss, no fuss, no problem. So it won't be quite as matte, but given the spring loads in this thing, I wanted to use our prototype on that and we prototype on the MarkForged. That said, barrels screw in very easily. There's a nice feature there. This nut actually lets you tighten them in so that you have a perfect fit every time. And for the guys who are traveling to their events on the MRT all the time, obviously the whole blaster breaks down very, very quickly. You can remove the grips, put the stock in, pull the barrel out, and turn it into something that looks like it could theoretically be fishing equipment, which is great for getting to and from some of these urbex uh, area games. That said, overall prime, like I said, even with a heavy, heavy spring load is quite comfortable. This blaster is going to be loud, but I now have a dart in it, which means that I can chamber, shoulder, and fire. And that's truly what you're getting for $700. For $700, you're just getting an incredibly smooth Springer experience, clean chambering of darts, integrated scar, and you too could nerf like a Singaporean. I mean, like truly, I can't wait to get this outside and put it over the chronograph because as much as like I could make gripes about some of the machining tolerances and the choices in different coatings and how like maybe poor Delrin is a uh, very, very durable, very solid, but could have been executed slightly differently. I am here to say that like that is a really smooth prime, an incredibly smooth prime for a blaster with this heavy a spring load in it. Now, Sab sells, I think, three or four different kinds of springs. I've got a pretty heavy one in here right now, although it is not the heaviest. Quick changing your springs is not easy. There are metric screws on the back cap here underneath the stock plate. You have to twist all of those off and you're gonna need like a wrench to do them. And then after you've done that, it pops off like this. There's a lot of pre-compression in a system like this, but said and done, the results can't be argued with. Overall, the weight definitely makes it feel somewhat real steel-esque, but it also like heavy equals quality. I think that's part of why human beings like gold so much. And so like the weight is nothing to, to fuss about. Like it definitely, it feels good in the hand. Uh, I would say that my current configuration with foregrip, with grip grip, with magazine, with barrel, etc., would probably be about um, $800 USD. So let's just, for the purposes of the clickbait, call it an $800 Nerf gun. That's still less than most Explorer blasters running around out there, uh, but certainly way, way, way more than anything you could pick up at Walmart or Target these days. Uh, let's take it outside. Let's put it over the chronograph. Let's get you our final thoughts.
All right, guys, check out that camera contrast. It's out here, it looks so shiny, so chrome. It's in here, it looks all spooky, tactical and gray. Let's go ahead and put a few of these over the chronograph. Like I said, I wanna get some hard numbers, then I wanna shoot down range and see if it's truly accurate enough for a, uh, a Singapore war, right guys? For the, uh, the standard war game. So we're using Adventure Force Pro Darts. That's become the standard in the States. So that's how we've been measuring a lot of stuff. I know that in Singapore, they have a harder time getting the AF Pro, so their numbers are probably gonna look a little bit different just because of that. Let's put a few over. That's not a joke. Um, 278, wow. 272, 80, 74, 72. And the good news is it should be relatively dry fire safe because the entirety of the internals are machined. So let's put a few just down range, step out into some slightly better lighting over here. I mean, I do wanna remark like, especially with, you know, <laughs> the Cryptek and the Hexagon grips don't explicitly match. And I know that if I was a true Singaporean and I was really using this for its intended purpose, which is of course to flex on the long shot guys, I would have it decked out with some optics or stuff like that. But given that I'm old school NIC, I don't even really use optics that often. So I'm not gonna go pull something off of a reflay and throw it on. Let's uh, prime it really quick. Grab this, knock it out, throw it in. Pretend it hasn't been a year since we've done that. The barrel does extend slightly into the magwell, so you need to make sure that your darts uh, fit in properly. There we go. And then let's put a few down range. So we're gonna, at 270, 280 being the FPS, we're gonna just start at our 100 foot away tree. Now we are standing like five feet closer, so we'll have to pretend for the fantasy that uh, Chris Cartai is back there with a bird of prey or something and uh, see if we can't hit him 100 feet away. Huh. Well then, well then, Saber Scar. That's pretty good. Can you hear that popping off the tree every shot? That's five shots, five hits. I mean, that's, there's another tree that's like a good 15 feet behind that. Let's just angle a little bit into there. I mean, all price, all flexing, all Gucci gang jokes aside, like this is a pretty serious Springer that is delivering very consistent, very accurate, very high powered performance downrange right out of the package. I didn't lube it, I didn't grease it, I didn't drip oil into it or anything. Now theoretically you can take some hex keys, pull it apart and do maintenance on that, either in the staging area or after your wars or however you wanna do it. I tend to do very low maintenance on my Springer base blasters. I just build them right the first time and the guts in here are definitely no joke. Certain Explorer blasters have been a little small for me in the past, but with the stock fully extended, it's honestly not bad and you don't want it super far out in front because again, it does weigh almost six pounds right now. I can't imagine throwing glass on it. You could very easily get this up to seven pounds if you were like really M-locking it and had a flashlight or a, a grip that wasn't made of onyx. But, whoo, that was interesting. The prime is so smooth, it's actually easy to let it go. I wonder if I double chambered there. I did and the spread was cool. This is a neat blaster. The question's gonna be up to you guys. Would you spend $800 on a Nerf blaster? I mean, the tournament scene is picking up and hopefully we get to play together again soon. It is a serious, serious investment in your kit, but in a world where, you know, production blasters are getting more and more expensive all the time, like, while you could definitely do this with a Caliburn, you would be spending at least half as much getting it to that point. And you definitely wouldn't be able to drive nails into wood, which I'm pretty convinced that if I just used it as a blunt force weapon, like I could, it's, it's built like a brick, but it is very potent, very accurate, relatively comfortable. It's pretty cool. Like I said, a couple of manufacturing gripes aside, this thing is pretty solid and it should be. It's $800. This thing costs more than most people's car payments. So let me know in the comment section down below, would you pay this much for a Nerf Blaster? Because I believe in being as transparent with you guys as possible, I will be earnest with you. Conrad sent this over specifically for the purposes of this review. I paid for all of the accessories myself and my opinions are entirely my own. However, 
Um, I did not pay $800 to import this blaster. You could if you were so interested, and I think that in a world where I had not been sent a review model, I would have eventually gotten around to this one. I have paid that much money for Nerf blasters before from Explorer, so like it's definitely something in my wheelhouse as someone who takes this hobby and this sport very, very seriously, but uh, in this specific instance, I did not drop that much coin to bring you guys this review. So your opinion is very, very valuable to me because we haven't seen an $800 blaster like this in a long, long time. But I think that it's sweet. I think that it's consistent. I think that, you know, each one of those shots definitely feels like an $800 blaster through it down range. But I am cognizant of the fact that that is more than pretty much anyone I know's car payment. It is a very, very expensive piece of kit. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know what you think. Much love, Blast On, Drac out. Uh, uh.